So this is lecture three in the series uh, <coughs> Relativity, Electrodynamics, and General Relativity, where uh, we studied in the previous uh, lecture uh, how, how measurements are made in Einstein's world. We looked at time dilation, uh, Lorentz contraction, and the relativity of simultaneity. And we want to uh, take a look at those effects again, but from the perspective of visualization through what are called Minkowski diagrams. This will be in preparation for a discussion of the twin paradox, will be, which will be in a separate, uh, a separate lecture. So uh, the, the idea is that we want to show on, on a diagram the, uh, the time and, and space uh, coordinates of, uh, of an event in space-time. And we want to be able to do that from the perspective of two uh, reference frames or more, uh, S and S prime where s is moving with respect to s at a velocity v. Well, let's just set up the situation for uh, two clocks at rest in s, uh, one frame, just to get oriented. So I'm going to draw a time axis vertically and a spatial axis x uh, horizontally. Now, uh, the, the figure is most convenient if the dimensions of both the axes are the same. So I'm not going to plot time here, I'm going to plot the speed limit times time there, so that the dimensions are the dimensions of, uh, of, a, le of a length. Okay, so CT, that's in light years, uh, for example. I might uh, choose other, other um, units, okay, and then so it might, it might be in uh, kilometers, uh, for, for example. Uh, the x-axis similarly. I might choose millimeters or kilometers or whatever is, is handy. For most of the discussion, I don't really have to worry about it, although I, I do have to worry about uh, setting the scales on the frame, uh, on the axes, uh, if I show two uh, coordinate systems on one, on one uh, picture. But let's start with one coordinate system and just imagine the uh, synchronization of two clocks in the frame, in the frame S. So I'll have a clock A, which sits at this fixed position X. I'll have a signal generator, and I'll have a clock C. And the distance from A to B is the same as the distance from B to C in our usual setup for synchronization. Now I'm showing the time evolution here, so I talk about world paths. Okay, so the clock A uh, uh, stays at the same uh, X value for all time, so it's a vertical line shows its world path, and similarly for clock uh, C. Now uh, the pulse generator uh, shoots out light rays in the plus x and the minus x direction, and light rays travel at naturally the speed of light, and, I, and you see uh, how uh, convenient it is that I chose the axes here to be C, T, and x, because then it's clear that the light rays are just, uh, are just world paths which travel on a 45 degree angle in this, uh, in this coordinate system, right? Uh, X is equal to CT for a light ray, and so it just travels here along the bisector of the, of the, two, uh, of the two axes. And I've shown that here, that here's one light ray going to the left at velocity minus C, and here's a light ray going to the right at velocity plus C. Now the light rays uh, intersect the world paths of the stationary clock A and the stationary clock B at the events A1 and C1. Okay, so by, the, by definition, I, uh, I synchronize the clocks uh, when, when, when they are coincident with the light rays. So this is a, therefore uh, a uh, horizontal line is a line of constant T. A1 and C1 have, uh, have the same time. I see to read that to read off that time. I just project onto the CT axis with a perpendicular. And I notice that lines of constant time are lines which are parallel to the x-axis. Lines of constant position are parallel to the CT axis. I usually say t-axis just for brevity. Okay, and that's how you read off coordinates and uh, and such and such in such a picture. I'm belaboring it because when we come to uh, putting two coordinate frames into one picture, I have to be careful about it and think again about lines of constant t prime and lines of constant x prime. 
So how would we put the T prime axis and the X prime axis of a moving frame onto this figure? Well, the, let's first consider the, uh, the world path of a point which is at rest at the origin in the frame S prime. That might be a clock, so that might be the world uh, the path, uh, world path of a of a clock at rest in S prime, at the sits at the origin in X prime. S prime is moving to the right at velocity v relative to the frame S, and so, and so that uh, that clock travels this world path. X is equal to v times t. But if I use the axis ct, then I have to put a c over here and divide through by the c over there, and here's my world path. Uh, for, the, uh, for, for the clock. Okay, this is, this is, this is uh, where the clock of the origin uh, goes, and so that becomes my CT prime axis. Okay, okay. So, uh, so that, was, that was relatively easy. I've indicated here the angle uh, theta between the T axes, and, uh, and we can read off what that angle is. Uh, the clock is moving to the right at velocity V, so, it, so here's how it moves, vt in a time t, okay? A time uh, progresses uh, forward on a, on, on a clock uh, at, at rest in the, in the frame s, okay? So, uh, so, uh, so here's a world line after a time t for a clock at rest in the frame s. Here's a world line of the, uh, of the origin of the frame s prime in the, in the lab frame. I see that the angle between them is theta, and so I've indicated that here. Okay, this vertical being the, C, the CT axis, and this line at the angle, as you see here, the world path of the clock at the origin at rest in S prime at an angle theta. Okay, now, next, next point we have to do is to put the X prime axis uh, on the, onto this picture. And the principle that we use to do that is the, is the second postulate of relativity, okay, that all frames measure the same speed limit, okay, the same speed of light. And so if, I, if, if in the, if in the uh, lab frame where I have a t-axis and an x-axis, my light travels on the bisector, okay, then that, then that has to be also the, the world path as seen in any other frame so it, it, its world path would be labeled x equals ct in s. It would be x prime equals ct prime in s prime. Same speed. The speed of light is universal, like that. And so now I have to put the x prime axis into this picture in such a way that the, the world path bisects the t prime axis and the c prime axis so that it achieves the same, the same uh, same path. So that means I have to lift the x prime axis up by an angle theta as I move the t prime axis off by an angle theta to achieve that. Okay. So that tells me how to put the axes onto the uh, onto the picture, and uh, this changes everything, right? Because x prime is now the the line of uh, a fixed t prime. T prime equals zero. That means that lines of equal t prime are parallel to the x prime axis. They're like this, okay? And that's in distinction to lines of constant t in the lab frame. They're at an angle theta, and they move like this. So we'll see that that's the reason uh, that uh, clocks which are synchronized in one frame are not synchronized in the other frame, and we'll analyze that quantitatively as we go, but that's the critical point. And the critical point being the universality of the speed of, of light. Now, you may not have used the orthogonal coordinate systems particularly, so let me just remind you of a little linear algebra about that. For example, I might have a, uh, an event P on my Minkowski diagram, and uh, I might want to read off what the T prime and the X prime is for, for that point. So I, I note that uh, x prime axis is, a, is the line of, of constant t prime, t prime equals zero. So the other lines of constant t prime are parallel to it. 
And so, and so I, I, I form a, a parallel line to the X prime axis that projects down to the T prime axis and I read off the, the T prime for that event. And then similarly for the X prime value. T prime axis is the line of constant x prime. And so the lines of constant x prime are parallel to the T prime axis. And that's what I've indicated with a dashed line. I project down through that, through that uh, line, which is at, at, which is at an angle uh, 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 theta with respect to the, uh, with respect to the, uh, uh, the x prime axis. OK. Right. And then and now and now over uh, in this particular case, I've shown the same situation, except in the case that v is negative. It might be that my my uh, my frame s prime is moving in the opposite direction, moving in the minus x direction. Well, it's moving in the minus x direction, and theta tangent of theta with v over c, then now tangent of theta is negative. Theta is negative, going in the opposite direction. So my t prime axis lies to the left of my T axis, okay, and then uh, and then therefore my x prime axis lies not above the x axis but below it by the same amount theta, like that. And then now I've imagined a, a point P and I, and I want to measure its its coordinates in both frames. Well, that's easy to do in the frame T and X because they're orthogonal axes. So so I just draw perpendiculars. In other words. X is a, is a line of constant T, T equals zero, okay? And so the lines of constant T are horizontal, and I, so I read off T sub P by putting in those parallels. And then similarly, the lines of constant X are uh, parallel to the T axis, and I drop it down like that. And uh, you know, I notice those uh, lines of constant T and constant X are perpendicular to one another, so this is the usual process of dropping a perpendicular and dropping a perpendicular. And then I read off my t prime and my x prime uh, coordinates as I did up here by following the lines of constant x prime and constant t prime. They're at an angle, and so I'm careful to, to show them here, at, uh, in this case, at an open angle, which is greater than pi over 2. While in this case, my opening angle is less than pi over 2. OK. OK. So now we can, once we have that, once we have that, that settled, how to uh, put down the axes, I can look, for example, now in one, in one picture, uh, how the uh, synchronization of clocks uh, in, in a particular frame in S prime is done. And then I can, since I have the T and the X axes on the same picture, I can read off what that means from the perspective of an observer in the lab frame. And here it is. Okay, so here uh, I have uh, a clock A and a clock C, but now they're at rest in the frame S prime. Okay, and so their and so their world lines are now tilted by the angle theta relative to this T axis. Okay, parallel to the T prime axis. So world world line of A, world line of C, world line of uh, of the uh, of the clock at rest. C, in S prime, that's the T prime axis. Okay, just like just like that. Okay, and uh, okay, and so I've, I've shown here then the, the T prime and the X prime axis in the case that V is positive, and I've taken my T and my X axes by convention just to be orthogonal for the case of the lab frame. Okay, and so now I do the synchronization process, and uh, from the midpoint between the two clocks, I shoot off a light ray to the left and a light ray to the right. Uh, wh where they hit the, the paths of the clocks, those points are simultaneous in the frame S prime, where the whole process is occurring with a at-rest pulse generator and at-rest clock. So I've indicated that here. This light ray goes at 45 degrees. This light ray goes at 45 degrees. And I see, of course, that the line of constant T prime, okay, is parallel to my x prime axis. It's at the angle theta relative to the horizontal axis, which is my x axis. And so from the perspective of t, okay, from the perspective of the lab frame, 
A prime and C prime occur at different times. There you have it. That's the relativity of simultaneity. The, the, this is a line of constant T prime, as you see by definition, because that's how I synchronize my clocks with those light rays. This is the line of constant T, and there's a discrepancy uh, between them. Clocks are synchronized in S prime, and they're not synchronized in S. Okay, so let's do that quantitatively now. See, that's a nice thing about the picture, about Minkowski diagrams. Okay, then I get a visualization for these, for these uh, uh, effects that tax my, my intuition, time dilation, and uh, lens contraction, and the relativity of something Okay, so now I can look at two, uh, two clocks. Let's say at first they're in rest in S, and let's see how much they're out of synchronization from the perspective of the clocks in S prime, and then let's turn the tables. I always like to do it from both perspectives to see that I have a consistent picture to avoid paradoxes. Okay, I want to see that the concept of time dilation can work both ways and not lead to a contradiction. And I see here already the precursor to that idea, the fact that the, that the lines of constant t are not parallel to the lines of constant t prime, so the two uh, coordinate systems can disagree in simultaneity. So here we have it. Here we have uh, the same, uh, here we have a couple of clocks which are a distance l naught apart at rest in the frame S. So one of them travels as a world path of the CT axis, the one at the origin, and then the one a distance l naught away uh, goes up has a world path like this. And you see, I've synchronized them in the frame S. They're both reading high noon at a position of constant time. Okay, now, now um, S prime takes a look at that situation, and S prime's X prime axis is tilted at an angle theta, and so this is his line of constant T, which might be his line of T prime equals zero. Okay, and he sees immediately, you see immediately that of course the clocks are not synchronized from his perspective because the X prime axis is at an angle to the X axis. The lines of constant t prime are at an angle theta to the lines of constant t. Okay, and so and so now I can I can read off uh, how much uh, the uh, observer fixed in S prime says the clocks synchronized in S are not synchronized from his perspective by doing a little geometry here. Here, this distance is L naught. This distance I'm just between these clocks I'm labeling as uh, as uh, d. Okay. And uh, okay, and uh, and D I see here is just the the time that, that passes between these two events. I call that T. Okay, and I read off from, from the picture that that D D over L naught is tangent theta. Tangent theta is V over C, so there's uh, there's that. And then I and then uh, the time that passes in the frame S is the length D, written as C times T, okay, and so C times T is L naught V over C, so T is L naught V over C squared. That's the relativity of simultaneity, the equation that we, we that we got in the previous lecture, but probably obtained here in a in a way which is much more uh, agreeable to you, right? It's it's a bit of a puzzle to do it just in just in words, and I think the figure. Helps uh, helps it out uh, a, a great deal. Okay, now let's turn the tables. However, okay, and imagine uh, two clocks which are which are at rest in uh, in s in in, uh, in s prime and now are viewed uh, from the perspective of, of, of s. And let's see that s agrees that uh, that the two clocks are not uh, synchronized and that S gets the same equation for the lack of synchronization that S prime got in the case one. So turn the tables, and now I, so now I have a clock number one moving at rest, moving uh, with respect to the lab frame. He's fixed in the frame S prime, moving at velocity V, follows this path. Clock two follows this path like that. I say that there's a distance uh, between them in their, uh, in their rest frame, which I'm calling L. 
okay? And then I know that this, that the, the axis here that labels the, the x prime axis is at an angle theta. So this is the line of constant t. So you see I've arranged the clock here. You have the same, the hands are pointed in the same way because they're synchronized, okay? Okay, and then, and then here's the line of constant t. And so I see that this, this clock here had his, had his hands uh, before, earlier, okay, than, uh, than, than the clock uh, at, at, at the origin, of course, because time is passing. So now I can get the dimensions of this, of this uh, triangle. Okay, I just use the law of sines. Okay, so d is the sine theta as L is the sine of pi over 2 theta, that's written down here. Sine of pi over 2 plus theta is cosine theta. This ratio then is tangent theta, that's the over C. Okay, but, but now D is the length of this, of this line, the line of, of time that passes in the frame S prime, so that's D is C T prime in this case. And so plugging that into uh, my formula here, I see that t prime is equal to L V over C squared again, okay? And you see L in this particular case is the distance between the clocks in their rest frame, so it's the appropriate equation, the same equation as I had before, okay? And so, and so I see from either frame, I get the same view of the lack of simultaneity of the clocks in the other frame. Okay, great, great, and that was easy. And a little geometry, and I'm and I'm all set. Uh, I'm, I'm all set to go. I, that's a simpler derivation, I think, than, than the previous one. Okay, now I want to go, move on to uh, Lorentz contraction and time dilation in this in the language on the Minkowski diagram. But there's an exercise I have to do first. I have to set the scales of the t x axis and the t prime x prime axes in order to make a visualization uh, which will be quantitative, okay? And I would have to do this in, in any case. This is not special to relativity. This is just uh, setting the scales if you're going to visualize a linear transformation. A Galilean transformation, for example, you'd have an analogous exercise. And I think it's uh, in one of the problem sets in your book, and you, so you might get the similar formula there as to how the scales on the Tx compare to the scales on the t prime, x prime axis in order that we incorporate the rent uh, contraction and time dilation and the other effects of uh, transformations between the two frames. So, so let's imagine a rod at rest in S, okay, and let's give it, uh, and let's give it a, a, an artificial length of gamma. Why do I want to do that? Because I'm going to imagine that I have a frame S prime which is moving by the lab frame at a velocity V with the appropriate gamma factor. And I want to say that, uh, that the unit length in the, in the X prime, uh, uh, in the S prime frame is, uh, is shown as here on, on, on the figure. So I'm imagining that I have a, a rod at rest in the frame S, okay? And I want to say that I measure the length of that rod in the frame S prime uh, to be to be the distance from O uh, to B, just to set a scale. Okay, just to set a scale. So now I'm going to be incorporating Lorentz contraction, right? And so the length of that of that rod in the frame S, you see, that's the distance at constant at, at constant uh, time in the frame S is along the x-axis. I'll call that gamma, I'll just adjust it to be to be gamma, because then S prime will come along and measure the length of that of that uh, of that rod to be one unit of length, which which is the rule of Lorentz contraction that the the length of the moving rod is gamma. Okay, and so when and so when S prime uh, measures uh, measures it, it contracts down to gamma over gamma, which gets me one, and that's what's stated. That's what's stated here. Okay, so that'll just that'll just set the scales, and you see the scales are set so that the picture incorporates the Lorentz contraction quantitatively. That's all that I'm doing here. I chose a particular way to do it. You might do it differently. You might want to choose this distance to be one, and this distance to be one over uh, gamma, 
to incorporate uh, a Lorentz contraction, you get the same. You'll get the same answer, of course. It's just the ratio of the uh, of the distances in the two frames. Uh, but now I can finish the exercise off and 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 see what what uh, what this length O B is in uh, okay uh, in in from the perspective of, of the frame S. And I see, I just do a right triangle here. This distance is gamma. This distance is BC times gamma, right? That that's, has to be the, the, this, this distance here. So the tangent theta is V over C, the ratio of this distance to this distance. Okay, so then the distance from O to B, oh, okay, is then uh, just the, given by the, uh, by the Pythagorean theorem in here. I do the arithmetic and I get this uh, funny looking uh, formula. So I see since OB is, uh, is defined to be one, one unit of length, that there is actually a change of scale, which is given by what I just, what I just uh, calculated here. So I'll always incorporate that change of scale uh, when I write down uh, uh, the, uh, the units on the, uh, on the axes T prime, X prime, as compared to Tx, so that I incorporate uh, Lorentz contraction and similar time dilation in a single in a single uh, in a single figure, and that's what's done down here. Okay, so I've chosen a particular I've chosen a particular v over c. It's v over c is three over five. Okay, that's nice because it, when I do the arithmetic and calculate gamma, gamma is one over the square root of minus v squared over c squared. Okay, I just do the arithmetic and then gamma is a nice ratio of of uh, small integers, it's five over four, and then s prime over s is about 1.46. Okay, so then, so then for, for example, I can take, I can take a, 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 a rod at rest in, in the frame s and sit it down here, okay, and it, might, and it has a unit length. Then I can put on a, a rod at, at rest in the frame s prime and it has a unit length, and I have to incorporate the change in scale, okay, to uh, to capture uh, to capture th that uh, that length uh, uh, appropriately, in, you know, in a way that that, that fixes that fixes this, the uh, the scales appropriately. Okay, so now I can so now for example I can I can observe the uh, the for example, a rod sitting at rest in the frame S and having length one. The ends of the rod go up the CT axis and vertically up here. And I see that one corresponds to point X in the frame X prime. That's Lorentz contraction. I built that in and, uh, and, and, that's, and that's good, okay? And similarly, I can put a rod on, at, okay, at rest in the S prime axis frame, so it sits along here, incorporating this change of scales, which stretches this axis out, okay? One appears out here, I've done the arithmetic, of, and uh, made, a, made a figure which is approximately, you know, in, uh, incorporating this funny fact of 1.46. And now the end of, of this, this rod, you know, this rod is at rest in, in X prime, okay? So, uh, so it, the end of this rod moves parallel to the T prime axis, as shown here, and it intersects the X axis at point eight. Ah, you see, so that both observers agree that moving rods are contracted and by the same amount. And I, and I can incorporate here in, in the, in the uh, Minkowski diagram, and that's handy for me to when I, when I, uh, when I compare measurements between the two frames. So in, in recitation section, we, we might look at a better way of setting of setting those scales, a more sophisticated way, which you, which utilizes uh, the notion of uh, of invariance. But we'll get to it later in the lecture once we discuss Lorentz transformations and look for invariance of those transformations. Now, similarly, I can do time dilation. Okay, I use the same v over c, and I and I lay down my units of time in the t axis. And then I lay down my units of time in the in the t prime axis. There's a change of scale. It stretches 
the T prime axis as shown there. And now I see a time dilation, okay? I see that, I see for example that the lines of constant T prime are parallel to the X prime axis. I go over here and I see that if, if a time of five passes in the S prime frame, then a time of four passes in the S frame. And then similarly, I can, I can go in the other direction and uh, yeah, wait for a time of five to pass in the S ax in the S frame, okay, and see that the lines of constant T are, are perpendicular to the CT axis. That, that corresponds to a time of four in the uh, S prime frame. So again, both observers say that the moving clocks are slowed down with respect to their own. Okay, five to four, five to four, and and uh, we've incorporated uh, a time dilation in a way which is uh, which is consistent uh, across across the across the frames. Okay, so that's nice. That's all we'll we'll do at this point. Uh, it, we'll we'll come back for the part B of this lecture. Uh, on the Minkowski diagrams, which will look at the Doppler effect as a precursor to the twin paradox, and then do a thorough uh, discussion of the, twin, of the twin paradox, actually in such a way that will set us up for a discussion of the equivalence principle when we come to general relativity. Okay, so see you at part B.